It's time to work some more equilibrium problems. Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and it's time to uh, continue our journey through AP Chemistry and Equilibrium. Now, in our last video, we learned about some applications of equilibrium constants. In this video, we're looking at a very special but a very important application of equilibrium constants, and that's what do you do when you have a very small equilibrium constant? There's something that you can do to solve those problems. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, here's an example. We have, at 600 kelvins, a chemist places one mole of sulfur trioxide gas into a one liter container, and of course the reaction below takes place, as you can see. After the reaction attains equilibrium, what will be the concentration of all three substances? So we're being told about the initial values, initial concentrations. We're given the reaction and then the value of K. So Remember, what problem-solving method do we use if we're given initial concentrations or pressures? Ice box, right? So we're going to set up an ice box. So I have ICE along the side. That stands for initial concentration and equilibrium. And let's plug these numbers in. So SO3, we have one mole in a one liter container. So that's one molar, SO3. And it doesn't tell us what the other initial concentrations are, so it's safe to assume those are both zero. So we're going to put zero molar for those two. Now it doesn't tell us anything else, does it? It doesn't tell us what any of the equilibrium concentrations are, so we're going to have to use X for these. So we know that um, the reactant side has to go down and the product side has to go up, because you can't go less than zero, can you? So uh, we're going to take the 1 and subtract 2x, and I say 2x because there's a 2 right here, and this is going to have to go up by 2x, and the oxygen is going to have to go up by 1x. So our equilibrium concentrations are 1 minus 2x, for sulfur dioxide it's 2x, and for oxygen it's just x. So now we're going to plug into the equilibrium cons constant expression, so I need to write that here. That's uh, products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient. So that's Kc equals SO2 squared times O2 concentration all over the concentration of SO3 squared. And now I can plug these in. So Kc is 5.9 times 10 to the minus 9th equals SO2 is uh, 2x, and that's going to be quantity squared. Oxygen is x, and then... SO3 is 1 minus 2x quantity squared. Hmm. Well, when I start evaluating these, uh, I know 2x quantity squared times x is 4x cubed. And I have to use FOIL on this down here, so that's going to be 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. And it looks like to solve this, I'm going to have to cross multiply. And I have a cubic equation, so I guess I ought to set it equal to 0. This is a messy problem, isn't it? Very messy. I don't know about you, but this is not a math class. And we already have some, some fairly decent algebra that we have to be able to solve in AP Chemistry, but it seems like this is just ridiculous, isn't it? Is there an easier way to do this? Well, there is. Let's backtrack a moment here. We're going to take advantage of the fact that this is a very small equilibrium constant. You know, 10 to the minus 9th. It's a very, very tiny number, isn't it? So I think it's safe to say that we're not going to have a whole lot of this one molar that's going to react, right? Not much of the reactant is going to react, and the amount of product is going to be very, very small. So it's safe to say that 2x is very small in comparison to the number it's being subtracted from, which is 1.00 in this case. So Let's do this. I think it's safe to say that 1 minus 2x is approximately equal to 1. I'm just going to ignore that minus 2x. Now, uh, if you show this to your math teacher, he or she might not like this very much, but as it turns out, this is a method that works. And so in chemistry, we use this quite a bit. We're just going to ignore that minus 2x, and now it's going to make our life a whole lot easier. Now let's plug in to the equilibrium constant expression. We got Kc equals you know, SO2 squared times O2 
over now it's one squared and now it makes our math a whole lot easier we don't have that uh, quadratic and all the foiling and all that to deal with when I cross multiply I get 4x cubed equals 5.9 times 10 to the minus 9 divide both sides by 4 and then just take the cube root on my calculator and I get that x equals 1.1 times 10 to the negative third now I do need to go back in and just double check to make sure that you know 2x really is very very small or negligible when compared to what it's being subtracted from the one so i'm going to go back in and do that little math uh, value there and calculate the percentage 2x would be you know two times that number so 2.2 times 10 to the minus third divided by one change it to percent it's only 0.22 percent so yeah it, it is safe to say that it was very negligible when compared to the number it was being subtracted from. So whoo, I just saved myself from having to do a cubic equation and all that stuff. So let's find the values of these others here. SO3 is 1 minus 2x. So when I plug that in, it's 0.998 moles per liter. So yeah, not a whole lot of the one molar reacted, did it? And then sulfur dioxide is 2x. So that's 2.2 times 10 to the minus third molar. And oxygen is just x, so that's 1.1 times 10 to the minus third molar. So we just had a nice shortcut here. So this is something that you can do when the equilibrium constant is very small. Now when I say very small, well, we call this the 5% rule very often in general chemistry, in AP chemistry. And we call it that because we can ignore, ignore that subtraction as long as it's less than 5% of what it's being subtracted from. So in this case, if we go back to that last slide, we can see that it was 0.22%, so very, very small. Um, if it had been like 5.1% or a little bit more than 5%, well, guess what? We probably wouldn't have been able to do that. This, this rule, this ignoring, works best when you have an equilibrium constant that's less than about 10 to the minus fifth. It works pretty well for those values. If it's 10 to the minus fourth, it might work, but sometimes it doesn't. Now, if we were to have a case where it was, you know, you, you plug it back in and it's more than 5%, unfortunately, you're going to have to start all over and use some other method to solve for x, like the quadratic formula or some other method for solving, if it happens to be a cubic equation, maybe that or something. But there is some good news. In AP chemistry, in the decades that I've been teaching AP chemistry, I have never seen students asked to use the quadratic formula or some other weird method, sorry math folks, to solve for x. And that's because AP chemistry is a chemistry class. This is not a math class. And so you're expected to know the chemistry, not so much the fancy math. So let's try another example. Let's take some, some air and let's uh, bottle this air. And we know that in air, nitrogen and oxygen gases react ever so slightly to form nitrogen monoxide gas. If the partial pressure of nitrogen gas is 0.78 atmospheres and 0.2 atmospheres for oxygen, what's gonna be the partial pressures of all three substances after the reaction in a closed container? And there's our reaction, the balanced equation, and there's the value for Kp. Now, that is a really small equilibrium constant, isn't it? That is way less than 10 to the minus fifth. So I think we can use the 5% rule on this, but we are gonna double check just to make sure. So let's use an ice box here. We've got e initial change in equilibrium. And since this is talking about partial pressure, we have a Kp. So let's plug in the pressures. Nitrogen is 0.78 atmospheres from the problem. Oxygen is 0.21 atmospheres. And nitrogen monoxide, since, since it doesn't say, it's safe to say it's zero. And that's all that's given to us. So uh, we don't know what any equilibrium values are, so we have to use the x. So nitrogen is going to be a minus x. Oxygen is also a minus x. And NO is going to go up by how much? Is it x? No, it's 2x, isn't it? Because there's a 2 right there. So our equilibrium values will be 0.78 minus x, 0.21 minus x, and 2x. 
So now let's plug these values into the equilibrium constant expression. So this is going to be a Kp this time. So we're going to write it like this. The partial pressure of NO squared, so we got a 2 there, over the partial pressure of N2 times the partial pressure of O2. And now let's plug and chug. So Kp is 4.35 times 10 to the minus 31st equals NO, so that's 2x quantity squared over nitrogen is 0.78 minus x and oxygen is 0.21 minus x. Now as you can see, if we foiled this out, we'd have a, uh, an unpleasant, shall we say, if you don't like the quadratic formula anyway, a rather unpleasant problem. But we're going to make it a lot easier. We're going to ignore this minus x right here. I'm going to cross that out. I'm going to ignore that minus x right there. Because it's safe to say, you know, with such a small equilibrium constant, these minus x values here are very negligible. I'm out of room, so I'm going to go on to the next slide here. And let's cross multiply now. So I know that 2x quantity squared is 4x squared. And then multiply this number times that times that. And I get this, 4x squared, equals 7.13 times 10 to the negative 32nd. Divide both sides by 4 and take the square root. And the answer is that x equals 1.3 times 10 to the negative 16th. Now, let's just double check to make sure that it is less than 5% of what it's being subtracted from. So I'm going to take the x, so 1.3 times 10 to the minus 16. Let's divide that by 0.21. And it turns out that that is 6.4 times 10 to the negative 14th percent. So that's way less than 5%. So we're, we're certainly good. And it would be even smaller if we divided it by the 0.78. So now we can find out our values here. So N2 is 0.78 minus X. If you want to put that into your calculator, you, you can do that, but you'll find it's basically 0.78 atmospheres. So it doesn't really change. And then oxygen is 0.21 minus x, so that's 0.21 atmospheres. It doesn't change. And the nitrogen monoxide is the 2x, so that's 2.6 times 10 to the negative 16th atmosphere. So it's safe to say that the amount of NO that's there is very, very small. And that's good, because NO is not really a gas that you want to breathe in a whole lot of. Well, I hope that by watching this video, you've learned how to deal with reactions where you have very small equilibrium constants. And I hope you know when to use the 5% rule. Hope that this video saves you some time. If you enjoyed this video, if you at least learned something from it, if you please hit that thumbs up button, if you'd be so kind as to do so. Uh, I love getting new subscribers and hearing from you. If you enjoyed the video or have any questions, please feel free to post that in the comments below. That may help some other chemistry students as well. I've been teaching chemistry for over 20 years. My name is Jeremy Krug, and I want to help you get an A in your class and make a 5 on your AP exam if that's what you're planning on doing. So thanks for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed this journey through equilibrium. Uh, join me again where we can learn some more chemistry together. together.